Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing a video that was recommended to me from one of my friends. He actually ran the sim a couple times and I decided that I would like to try it out for myself. So here we are. Today we're building a team of undrafted legends. They somehow still found their way into the NHL, even though the draft passed them by. That's dedication right there. You have to respect it. So I'm using a website that you've probably heard of before. It's called Quant Hockey, and we can simply filter by undrafted active players. We could do all positions, or we could go ahead and look at them individually. But let's just have a quick glance here. Obviously, the bread man, who I think had some controversy in a video that I made before, and that video took forever to make as well. I returned every player to their draft team, and people were saying I should put Panarin on Chicago, but they didn't draft him. Technically, he's undrafted, as is evident right here. So anyway, Panarin's the only superstar, I want to say. The only player that is going to be... Definitely the only player that's going to be above 90 overall. We have Mark Giordano, who is maybe an 83, 84 overall. I'm actually not too sure. Zuccarello has a couple abilities... Likely in the 85-86 range, if my memory serves me correct. I forgot about Tori Krug. He's going to be a solid defender. We have Marcheseau, Yanni Gord, who was doing quite well for Tampa Bay, and then found himself on the Seattle expansion squad. I see some Capitals legends. Connor Sheary, Nate Schmidt, and Garnett Hathaway. And I also see the boy, Neil Pionk. Trevor Moore is right up there with people that I draft all the time. You know, him and David Krejci. Definitely competing for that, but I think Krejci is winning by quite a bit. Barclay Goudreau is going to be solid as well. And then we have Luke Lindenning, who has 90 face-offs, I think it is. I usually draft him just for that. And I don't even ever sort our team by the face-off win percentage, I don't think. So I don't really know if I've seen him statistically win a lot of draws. I just go based off the number. Should probably do that next time. Iofalo is going to be a solid player as well. Vitrano. Like, we're not going to be amazing. But we'll be solid. If we just sort by forwards here, Evan Rodriguez is pretty good as well. Superman. Achari. Yeah, there's definitely going to be some very solid players. Kuzmenko. He got an overall bump recently as well, I believe. 56 games played, 50 points. What a mad lad. Some others that I recognize from drafting. Mason Marchman, Barabanov. They'll be on the starting roster, I would imagine. We already got a basic look at what our defensive core will be, but let's just go back here. So we have Giordano at the top. 564 points. Very solid, Marcus. Krug will likely be the highest overall defenseman. I think he's 86 or something along those lines, so he will definitely be a good addition. No defensive superstars on this team, but just a overall... Solid core. Oh my word. Arbor Zekai. Or Wi-Fi, if you will. I don't know if he'll make the starting lineup, but I would like to think that he would be on my team. And now it is time for goalies. Sergei Bobrovsky. He will be our starter, I'm thinking. Maybe like, does he even have abilities anymore? I don't know. Ooh, Georgiev might give him a run for his money, actually. Yeah, that could be close. Some more Capitals legends right here. Lindgren was ripping it up for a minute. I think he's kind of cooled down now. Logan Thompson's maybe like 84, same with Pavel, so I don't think they will be competing for that starting role, but still good goalies. I have never in my entire life seen Jackson spelt that way, and I'm kind of here for it. You know what? I'm kind of curious. What if we go to all goalies? Just, I mean, they're not going to be on the team. Just for curiosity. Belfour and Joseph run drafted? How'd I not know that? Same with Dwayne Rolison. What is going on? I feel like there's a lot of undrafted players that I had no idea would be on this list. Hiller as well. Also, there used to be nine rounds of the draft, but who is on here that's active? Oh, Halakin. Okay, interesting. No one from round eight, though. They're done. I don't know what year the draft stopped doing nine rounds and went down to seven. We go to all players here. Oh, 25! When was this? A oh, you know what? Maybe when there was like two teams in the league. That could be it. I wonder if Barry's related to Alex. Makes you wonder. We finally get a birth date. 1954. So this was a while ago. All right, well, I think we know what we have to do. Let's go ahead, jump into NHL 23 with this squadron and see how they will perform in the NHL. The team has been assembled on NHL 23. I'm going to run them through a season mode 
I just feel like it's more efficient than franchise mode for this specific use case. Also, there isn't really a way to just add the team, so I'm gonna have to remove a team from the NHL, which is one unfortunate thing. The second unfortunate thing is you can't just move players to the, the team. So I could go through and move the entire roster to like the ECHL or something, or, you know, the SHL just to get them out, but I don't know. I think we're just gonna run with it as it is. Fantasy draft will obviously be off. CPU trades, I guess we could leave it on. No, you know what? Let's turn it off for this one. I will not be making any trades. So that's a thing to consider. Now the question becomes, what team do I take out? And I think it has to be whoever is the lowest overall. So far, oh, we have an 81. Montreal, I am terribly sorry. The Lake Erie Legends have landed in the Atlantic Division at 91 overall. Let's go put the lines together and see what we're dealing with. There's the bread man. Gonna be our captain, I would imagine. Edit the lines. I'm gonna do best lines. There's no line chemistry here because this isn't franchise mode. But there we go. So we have Gord playing with Panarin and Marcheseau. It's a pretty good first line. Then we got more Rodriguez and Zook. Kuzmenko on the third line with... That's a very good third line. It's also got the perfect typing. Sniper, two-way forward, playmaker. And let's just run through. Once again, show that everyone here is undrafted. That's the forwards. Even that fourth line is really solid. Power forward, grinder, two-way forward. So they should be solid down there. And Zuccarello is going to be a playmaker. That whole second line is just playmakers. And then we've got playmaker, two-way forward, playmaker. But I think Panarin is a bit of a sniper. You know? Is that pass shoot frequency thing a hidden stat? Am I able to see that anywhere? I feel like I'm not. So we do have a stud and we got depth. So the offense is there. Defensively, we've got Krug and Neal. Very good first pairing. Again, there's not a superstar back here. But they definitely have all the pieces they need to be successful. Handedness is all good. Nice. And best lines does go with Alexander. Georgiev will be the starter for this season. Bobrovsky backing him up. If we go to scratched, these are the players here. Logan Thompson's 85, couldn't make it. Shiri and Vetrano also not able to make the cut. Power play, looking good. Penalty kill. We can't see the chemistry, so it doesn't really matter that much. But, I don't know if this team can make the playoffs. I have a sneaky suspicion that we can. We're 91 overall. You know what? Yeah, we can. Let's just do the same check here. So all undrafted defensemen. And if we go to goalies, there you have it. Okay. So I'm going to say we actually get 44 wins. I think it's going to be a good year. And I think Panarin's going to get the most points. 75. I don't think we're going to get a whole lot of offense, but I think we'll get enough. Watch me be entirely wrong and we just go out here and get rinsed. It's possible. Can't rule it out. But well, that's a pretty good start. Came back down to earth for a second there, but still doing relatively well. Middle of the pack at the moment, so our division not going to be an easy one to conquer. I'll tell you that for free. It is incredible how much faster the season simulation is. I know that in franchise mode, obviously, there's a lot more that it's got to calculate and whatnot in the background, but I love this simulation speed. We're still only battling for like third and fourth in the division. Look at that win streak. Come on, boys! If we didn't lose this game against the Sens, it would have been nuts. But 4-1 over Detroit, and then a 6-5 shootout win against the Senators. And then we went on to win, holy crap, seven more. So eight straight dubs. And even then, we are still third in the division. With a record of 36-23-1. Hello? I still think playoffs are basically a guarantee, but we'll see how the post-trade deadline goes. Not treating us too politely so far. Apparently it's been treating everyone like crap and we managed to make it in barely. With 93 points, we finished fourth in the Atlantic Division. 45 wins this season. Very solid. Where does that put us in the league? We are 11th. So once again, yes, our division was just outrageous. The Rangers and the Sabres got shafted. President's Trophy goes to the Bruins. They put up 107. Let's have a look at the individual performances now. 86 from Breadman. 67 from Zook. And 66 from Marcheseau. Good stuff. 50 points from Kuzmenko on the third line. Take that all day. Goaltending was not it. We had a 902. 298 from Georgiev, who basically split 50-50 with Sergei, who had a much better go at things. But... 
You know what? It is what it is. Darcy Kemper slayed it this year. 43 dubs and a 917 save percentage. Robin Leonard's right there. I do see a 925 from Vasilevsky. Fair play. Almost point a game from Victor Hedman. Tampa really did pop off this year. Dougie Hamilton had 73. Hughes with 72. EK and Miro put up 67. Dreisaitl, along with his nice amount of assists, had 106 points. Being one of two players to break Hundo this season, he also wins the Art Ross. Patrick Kane gets 102 with 60 goals. That is certainly a Rocket Richard winning season from him. Kaprizov just shy of 100, putting up 99. And the Breadman is on the front page. So that's nice. Now the question becomes, will the Legends suffer the same fate as most of my teams? And that is a first round exit. It's a best of three. I think there's going to be a game seven. Nope, I was wrong. And Tampa Bay goes on to win another Stanley Cup. Great performance from Panarin though. Nine points in six games. We were a point a game from Zuccarello. Gord and Ayafalo both had five. Kuzmenko four. We did good. Goaltending, oh boy. Netminding was certainly our downfall for this one. I can't really confidently say our defense did anything phenomenal either. Well, let's have a quick peek at the awards here. Did we win anything individually? That is the cue of the day. And the answer is absolutely not. Well, there's your playoff tree. Tampa just cleaned up. They went to five games and then a sweep and then six games and then five. So they didn't get pushed to seven even once and they only went to six once. Actually, look at Vancouver's journey as well. Sweep, five games, five games, and then they got demolished. All right, well, there you have it. The undrafted all-stars. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. If you have any other concepts like this, like, you know, the seventh round all-stars or just teams like that or any video ideas, leave them down below. It's always appreciated. And on that note, I will see you soon.